Welcome to Bee Home Resources, a place you can depend on for all your home ownership needs. My name is Kathleen Gano, your real estate concierge, and I'm excited to share with you how to maintain, update, protect your investments. Today, I'm here with Tim Waldron of Angels Painting. Welcome, Tim. So glad Thank to have you. you. Thank you, Kathleen. Glad to be here. Tim, tell me a little bit about Angel's Painting. How did Angel get started? Well, Because uh, there's really an angel, right? There is an angel. <laughs> there's uh, uh, Angel Sr. started Angel's Painting 24 years ago. He mm -hmm. emigrated from Chile and was in the painting business. And so he decided to start uh, Angel's Painting 24 years ago. And uh, his son, Angel Jr., upon graduating Boston College, um, uh, approached his dad. His dad approached him about buying the business. And awesome. uh, so Angel Jr. took it over uh, six years ago and has been running it ever since. That's awesome. And yep. you got your um, vice president? Yes, I am. Yep. Awesome. Well, we're, I'd like to talk a little bit today. We are in New England yes. and uh, many of our houses um, require painting frequently. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's talk about the exterior of the house today for okay. the purpose of today's show. Um, what type of paint is best for exterior when you're painting the exterior of a house? Well, um, acrylic paints, they can be applied to wood, um, stucco surfaces, just about metal and just about any type of surface. Um, of course, when you're want some durability and oil-based paint for uh, decking and trim. It's exposed to the elements, and if you want a really hard surface, especially for the flooring, an oil base might be applied. Wow. So, yeah, so I, you know, the average homeowner here not understanding, like, I have to buy different kinds of paints for different areas. Um, can you just paint over the previous paint this is the big question you know especially when i'm working with homeowners buying a home you know can i just paint over it or can do we need to strip it uh, you can paint right over it it depends on the previous paint that is on there the type of paint so you want to know what surface is there previously whether it's acrylic or oil based um, when it's, um, of course, you want to remove any cracking or loose paint before you paint over it. You may, um, in some cases, just a good clean surface with a nice uh, uh, base to it, you can just paint right over it with, uh, and you don't need to use any primer. In some cases, you will need some primer as well. So tell me more about that. What is the primer going to do? It actually helps the paint adhere to the previous surface on there mm -hmm. and, and helps it uh, cure itself. If, um, if we're scraping down to bare wood and we're lose, removing some paint, we're on the bare wood, we always spot prime those spots first and then we put two coats of paint and sometimes it may require three coats. So two to three coats mm -hmm. to be... Um, Fair. And how long does, um, in New England, <laughs> how long does a rush paint Well, that's a good last? question. It will really depend on, on the environment that it's in, the exposure to the sun, trees, uh, where you are. Even in New England could be quite different down the Cape. It's salty air. But anywhere from five to ten years, um, a good paint will last. And a stain, although cheaper, uh, does not last as long as, an, as a paint and may require some reapplication in a four-year period. That's interesting because um, when you think about the difference between a paint and a stain, mm -hmm. I'd almost think that the stain would um, last longer than a paint. What it'll do is it'll start to fade. You'll see some fading, mm -hmm. especially on the sunny side of the home, um, but the, it won't crack, it'll just give you more of a fade, whereas a paint will start to crack. But that harder surface helps it, it almost that acrylic enamel, um, I almost consider it like a, a fingernail polish. Um, it will adhere to that house and protect it from the elements, especially in New England. We have driving rain, driving snow, so paints do last longer. So, um, you know, every summer I see the college painters come out of out of, out of school <laughs> sure. and make the rounds in the neighborhood. What is the best time of the year to actually paint the exterior of a home? Well, in New England, it's March to October. We mm -hmm. really like to see it above 50 degrees consistently overnight to have the paint cure. Um, 
weather patterns changing, we are paint, finding ourselves painting. If it, the weather's permitting, we'll paint right up until Thanksgiving, and we may start projects depending upon the rainy season earlier in the season. But March to October are the ideal times in New England for sure. Okay, and that will give you a better end product and more oh, life. Oh, for sure, yep. And, and it's all, when you say can you paint over existing paint, it, in our industry, the professionals know it's really all in the prep. So yeah. what goes into preparing the surface, removing anything loose, caulking the seams, um, you know, that leads into also, can you paint over vinyl? I know I, most people always that ask that question. That was one of my <laughs> questions because, um, you know, working with homeowners, they are, uh, you know, like, I hate the color of the vinyl. I'm going to have to re-vinyl the house. And so can you paint over vinyl? You can, um, 100%. You can almost paint any surface today. Um, it, again, an acrylic base will paint right over that. Uh, bear in mind that a lot of times with vinyl, you might not be able to choose the color. So going to a mm. darker color may absorb some heat and cause the plastic to warp, which will, which will buckle on the paint and yeah. cause that to some issues too. And uh, a funny side note, because a neighbor down the street had just sided their house a few years back and, and chose the same color and um, shutter scheme as our home. And my wife had said, boy, you know, I... Why did they pick the same color? Can we paint? <laughs> that happens all the time. Right? Can we <laughs> paint it? And I made the mistake of saying, yes. Oh, well, we can paint the vinyl. And I have not heard the end of that. And I said, wouldn't you rather take a trip than paint the vinyl side? Yeah, so, yeah, just live with us. But color. yes, you, you can paint vinyl for sure. Yeah. Yes. You know, some of them, I do see mistakes. Um, I call it um, house crying. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen people paint shutters. Yes. And next thing you know, they've got streams of stains underneath the shutter coming mm -hmm. down. Looks like the house is crying. Right. What causes that? It could be they they applied it at the wrong time of year, didn't give it enough time to really cure. If it's super, super hot and they decide to paint the shutters, they should try to do it in a, a cool, dry area. Maybe in the garage area, we'll stage the shutters. We give them a proper time to dry and cure before we'll go hang them back on the house. But if you have a really hot, 100 degree moisture day, yeah. you could it may have not cured. And then if you have some rain, it's going to drive it right down onto the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we deal with a lot of antiques, um, mm -hmm. and with antiques, sometimes come the lead paint. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you, what is the best way to deal with lead paint? Well, you have to um, make sure you have a lead certified mm -hmm. contractor for sure. Um, this techniques that they have to abide by: spreading the tarps out, covering beyond the. the the area where the chips and the dust can can get down, but you have to remove all loose pieces for sure, yeah. and uh, and dust. Clean the house very good, and uh, we use what's called an encapsulation uh, method. It's an encapsulating type of paint to cover over the lead paint. Um, you can strip. So it. you can do that. You now. can. Yes. I know. Before they recommended stripping. Stripping the whole thing down, and yeah. um, of course that's. Just it's possible. It's just a lot more work to do. Yeah. Um, but one thing. Uh, Environmentally, I'm not sure it's better. Uh, actually, encaps. It's not actually to yeah. environment. You're creating more dust, more yeah. chips, everything. So encapsulating it is very safe, and it keeps the dust and the chips from spreading and becoming airborne. Um, and one thing I bear in mind that when you strip it, you have a nice, clean, smooth surface, and you're starting fresh. When right. you paint over it lead paint's very thick so mm -hmm. it, you'll see that divot so i try to set expectations that when you if you're right up against the house you're going to see the the divot go in we try to use a high build thicker type of product that helps fill in that divot area but you yeah. will see a little bit of divot from the street side when you're looking straight on nobody really notices that it's only when you get right up to the house but uh, setting the expectations is huge with the homeowner because they may think that they were going to see a completely smooth surface if you're just painting over it, but that's not the case. Yeah, as a former antique owner, nothing is perfect. In <laughs> that's <antique>. never perfect <laughs> than the older homes in New England. It just is not. <laughs> um, so let's talk about method of painting um, because I, you know, have seen homes being sprayed versus brush and roll. What is the best method for applying? Well. Um, Professional painters will tell you, there's some professional painters say, oh, you can spray it 
and and it's just as good as brush and roll, but the, the fact is that's not true. Spraying mm -hmm. is, uh, a lot of professional spray, we spray as well. If you have a flat surface, a stucco wall, um, it's much faster. Mm -hmm. It does use more paint, but it I is like a that. faster process, and you can do it interior and exterior. Uh, of course, you'll have to cover all the windows um, if it's really particular not to overspray something. Um, but when you want consistency, uh, brush and roll on the wall uh, always looks cleaner, and it yeah. lasts a little longer as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how long should I call if I want to get my house painted? Because <laughs> I know in today's world it's mm -hmm. hard to get um, things scheduled. It is. Uh, obviously, winter time. Um, some of the crew, we, we run probably half the team in the winter time because we're doing an exterior project. We put more people on it. Um, but uh, giving them enough notice, a couple of weeks notice, a, a good quality painter should be able to get in there. But if you're looking for a summer project, you might want to book a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. even sometimes previous. We'll get a lot of calls in the fall to come look at a property to be the first one on the schedule. Yeah. Because the summer is all um, predicted on weather as well. We're not, right. we can't paint in the rain. So um, one of the things we do is when we start a project, we don't leave the project. We, we stay with that home. We don't start another project at the same time. But weather permitting, if we have a very rainy season, those projects can, can continue drag to be on. pushed back and, and drag on. So yeah. uh, if you have a large exterior, you want to prep for it. Um, have them take a look at it. If they take a look at it in the fall, have them take another look at it in the spring. There may be some changes to the property that have occurred over the winter time that you you may have missed. So, right. so just rewalking the property and setting some expectations before you start the project. But uh, give painters a, a, a good amount of time, depending upon the size of your property as well. Okay. Yep. And um, let's, can we talk about decks a little bit? Because I'm sure planning a deck project, and I'm really confused as to what kind of product I want to build my deck. But if I were to go with a wood product, my concern is, how do I choose the stain? What What's happening with stains with decks today? Uh, well, some trends are still the natural colors, but we're seeing a lot of grays work their way into the stain on the deck, because stain comes in many colors, not just natural. We're seeing the browns, the grays, um, especially down in the coastal areas, you might even see some blue staining mm -hmm. over uh, along the ocean. They want to kind of pull that ocean view in. Um, but um, reds even, um, the cedars, the reds. And that's what I remember, you know, when I think of staining, I, mm -hmm. I see that red color and I go, ooh, I don't like that. Um, and so uh, when talking with the contractor about the deck, you know, and the different products, I do like the gray um, mm -hmm. look. I think it fits better with my house and what, you know, what um, aesthetically it's going to look better. Right, right. Yeah, the neutral colors are... Well, grays uh, to the eye will pull out different things to different people. Mm -hmm. it, on an interior, depending upon the light, some people may see a, a slight pink. Some may see that light Nantucket green mm -hmm. or even a blue. So it will pull the colors from your furniture. So if you have uh, a blue furniture that may be like this carpet, it's going to pull the blue out of that gray in the wall. So, Interesting. Um, but uh, for an outside deck, it really looks nice. Yeah. Uh, it can give it like a whitewashed look. But again, if the people will ask me, why do I have to stain my deck every year? If there's no that roof over it. Yeah. <laughs> if that was my next question. <laughs> there you go. If there's no roof over it and it's getting hit by the sun all the time, yeah. um, every other year, is, is fine to put a nice protective coat. Paints will actually, again, going back to that hard surface that it creates, that acrylic, will protect the surface more, mm. uh, even though the stain penetrates and becomes part of the wood. So if it's pressure treated, you want a stain. Yeah. It will absorb into the wood. Um, but the what difference- What if we have mon like mahogany decking or a different kind of wood? Other than I prefer paint. to stain those and uh, use a product called paraffin that works on those. Um, it allows them to expand and contract and yeah. we don't want to block up the gaps between the boarding and the decking as well. Right, right, yeah. right. Yep. 
Wow. So this little deck project that I have is just kind of like going on and on. <laughs> it's Sometimes people say, uh, I'll tell them, well, now that you've decided on us, that was the easy part, but now you have to pick out the colors and boy, that that, is hard. it's very difficult for people. So, um, yeah. but if you were looking at um, deck colors, again, it goes with the the grays, the the browns, the the reds, in the natural colors that people want to just use the wood that's naturally as it is with the grain. Um, again, being uh, <laughs> you just mentioned some trends for colors. Um, I, being in the real estate industry, a lot of times we're talking to the the owner about the front door. Mm -hmm. um, is there any science or have you heard of things that work really well for front doors? Uh, it will depend on the home. So yeah. like a traditional home or a period home, um, blues work really well for a period home or even a modern home. So blue is probably one of the top colors right now for a front door, really? believe it or not. It's calming. It's cool. Um, it adds curb appeal. So front door really does matter, especially to a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. um, you may suggest to the homeowner to change the color of the door. Um, it hasn't been proven out, but they say black is uh, adds value to your house. And everybody seems to do that. And I think it's because it has a richness to it. It works yeah. with a traditional home and a modern home. So the blue, the black. Um, people are actually getting very bold with the front door. So mm -hmm. you didn't really see orange or yellow, yeah. but because we're doing the house in these neutral colors that you're seeing today, the grays, the greens, the lighter greens, and yeah. even the white, having a nice front door, that curb appeal, it stands out. So uh, yellow is really an inviting color to people. Um, Mine is a maroon, which is a red, which uh, they say is energy mm -hmm. and um, and again uh, inviting to come on in. So and the door does not have to match the shutters. It does not. No, yeah. that's that's a myth. You definitely don't have to. It, you really want to have that be the piece that sets the tone when you're entering the home. Yeah. So if you have that uh, different color, it can really invite someone in and say, "Here we are." And you want that home order to even a potential buyer to say, this is my future home and I love the color of that door. I wouldn't have thought of painting it yellow, but now I love it. And in fact, Angel's front door is yellow. So is it yeah, really? it is. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Because when we were looking at different colors and, and ideas, I, I didn't actually notice it. So I, I sent out something to all of our employees and I said, what color is your front of your door? You know, and he yeah. said, well, mine's yellow. And we all were thinking about what does that mean about you? You know, so. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, I would imagine color has so much emotion that comes with it. It does, it does. we express with color. Um, so I'm sure you're seeing it too, that even the exterior of houses, the black and the dark charcoals, we, you know, the grays have always been there in the whites, but, um, We'll see, and it looks really sharp when you paint your house. In, in yeah, especially the black. some of the contemporaries, and a lot of the window frames are now darker color they versus are. the white. So right. it's bringing us into those um, kinds of color tones, more I agree. naturals. I agree. Yep. Um, I have heard a lot of things about um, from homeowners about nightmares about hiring a professional. What should a homeowner consider when hiring a painter? What are some questions they should ask them? They should um, check on their credentials. Do they have what's called, in Massachusetts, we have an HIC license, which is a home improvement contractor license, which mm -hmm. means we're certified by the state that we have insurance liability, workman's comp for our employees, should they fall off a ladder. And if the work does not occur, it's guaranteed. Right. So um, that's one thing, checking their credentials. How long have they been in business? Um, do they know the difference between an oil base and, mm -hmm. uh, and an acrylic? Because a lot don't. And if you just paint over an oil-based trim, you could take your fingernail and it'll peel right off. But it's amazing how many times we go back to a house and we realize that they did not properly prime this or sand it or get it ready for the next application, depending upon. Um, I would imagine that's how a professional can maybe save some money is to skip a couple steps and then. Um, they can. They Sometimes they mix primer with the paint mm. so that 
um, they, they may only have to apply one more coat. Right. And uh, in the infinite wisdom of one of our painters, he's been with us for over 15 years, he said, why would we do that? Now the primer is only doing 50% of its job. And I said, do you, do you mind if I use that? You know, <laughs> That's so great. It, it That's is great good. I'm like, no, I want the primer to be 100% of its job. And then if I need to add a third layer to cover a, a difficult color because it's bleeding through, I will. But make sure that the contractors are reputable. Do they have references? Of course, we're going to pass references of people who like our work, but have a portfolio of some of the work that they've done before. Do they have experience with high-end paints, um, mm. Holland lac or fine European paints for front doors? They're just, it's a different way to apply those if they don't have experience in them. Um, one thing, do they have their own carpenter team? Because the That's very a good point, yeah. Very few exterior jobs that we have that we don't have to replace some trim, a window sill, um, and to hire to have them all of a sudden come about that. Now they have to hire another team out. We we incorporate that in. We show you what we think needs to be replaced. But sometimes after pressure washing and scraping, we run across a few more items. But our team is already there doing some minor repairs or, or some major repairs. And just to have them on site doing that, I could say, hey, add in that windowsill and it's very minimum. We're already there on site. We're not calling another carpenter team, team back to do that. And I would say years of experience of their painters. Uh, a lot of our painters have been with us for well over 12 years. Our carpenter team's been together for 15 years. So having that experience and knowing the older home, if you said the antique, as mm -hmm. opposed to the, to the newer home, Newer homes have, um, their trim is pretty standard. You could go to Home Depot Lowe's and get that trim. An older home, you may have to have a carpenter team customize, customize and do yeah. some custom build. And, and we've had to do that in quite a few applications. Yeah, especially in New England where we have such um, depth in our age of our homes. We do, we do. And you yeah. can't, and that was custom milled trim on a lot of houses and they, they just don't sell that. So can right. we, mill some pieces that look very close, yes, for sure, that you wouldn't even notice from the street because you can't buy that trim and that type of thickness of wood as well. Right, right, yeah. right. Wow, so just in summary, when we're painting the exterior of home, we're, we have to think about all of the prompt prep, which includes, tell me again, the power washing. Yes, Pre pressure washing, uh, spreading your tops so that you collect loose chips so there's less cleanup at the end. Right. Uh, spot priming as well. We, we remove sand down loose pieces. Caulking all the edges is is big. Yeah. Um, filling in the gaps around the, it stops bugs from entering, it stops moisture. So we caulk all edges, all trim, everything. Um, but the proper preparation is really what's gonna make the paint last the longest. So- And getting, protect your house. And protect your house, getting yeah. a nice clean surface for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has been really informative, Tim. Thank, well, thank you, thank so you so much, much, Kathleen. And I know you guys work in Magro as well as many other areas in mm -hmm. the in the area, um, and your reputation really stands out. Um, I, I work with a lot of different painters and contractors through my business over the last thirty years, um, and I haven't been able to find anybody say anything bad about Angel's painting. So I really appreciate you um, being one of our resources. Thank and, you and um, for joining us today. Well, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that. Great. Yeah. Well, um, I want to thank you for joining us today as well. If you have any tip ideas for topics for us um, or just simple questions about your home and how to take care of it, please email us at the email address on the screen. We want to earn the right to be your real estate concierge. So I'm going to invite you to join Tim and myself and all the other um, face, uh, fa um, resources that we have on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Be Home Resources. Again, I am Kathleen Gineau, and I am signing off for today. Be well and live well. <laughs>